everyone, I'm Liz from The Happy Teacher. Primary teachers know that you have to be super organized and prepared in order for your day to run smoothly. Over the years, I've taught both kindergarten and first grade, so I want to share with you some tips today for setting up your homework folders. Some people call them take-home folders, weekly folders, Friday folders, whatever you call them, let me help you get them set up this summer so you're ready for back to school. Now, if you're a brand new teacher or maybe you're a new teacher to the primary grades, these tips are going to be extra helpful for you. Okay, first things first. Let's talk about the folders that you're going to be using. I like to use the vinyl, thicker, plastic covered folders because I think they hold up a lot better. During the summer, I'll go and I'll shop the local sales around town and I'll find about 30 or 40 of the exact same folder and I'll buy all of them in the same exact color. Now you'll wanna shop around a little bit so that you can get the best deal. In the past, I've tried the one cent or 10 cent folders and they honestly just don't hold up as well. I've tried laminating them and that helped a little bit, but I would need two or three sets throughout the year. So shop around, see what you can find and know that the money you spend on them is going to pay off if they're a more durable folder because they're gonna be going back and forth from home to school. So pick a folder that you love. Personally, I like the two pocket folder with the prongs in the middle so I can put a sheet protector inside, but you find what works for you. If you don't like the prongs, just go with the pocket folders. Shop around and you'll be able to find some awesome deals over the summer. As I mentioned before, be sure to buy some extras because you might get new students during the year, some of the folders will be lost or destroyed, so make sure you get about 30 to 40 folders so you'll have plenty for the year. I like to use green folders for my take home homework folders because to me green means go and I want this folder to go home. All the other folders are going to stay at school. So for me I choose green but the color doesn't matter just stay consistent so all the kids have the same color folder. It will be easier to spot them in the classroom and make sure the right folders are going home. Okay now that you've found the perfect take home folder it's time to get them set up. First you'll want to label the front cover with the students names. You can also put their number on there. If you don't have your class list, just go ahead and skip this step for now. On the inside of the folder, I put two sticker labels. The left side says keep at home and the right pocket says return to school. Depending on the age of your students, you may want to include a picture or an icon to help them remember which side is which. On the back of the folder, I have a label with my name and classroom number on it, just in case another teacher or student finds it in the hallway or on the bus or wherever. I also put my email or phone number on the label. This part is totally optional, but I figure it doesn't hurt to have it on there. What else goes inside of my take home folders? Two very important things, the daily reading log and the behavior log. When students come into the classroom in the morning, I greet them, give them high fives and hugs, and they go hang up their backpack in their cubby. At this time, they take out their take-home folder and they'll put it in the designated spot in the classroom. You'll want to have a basket or somewhere special where all the kids will put their take-home folders. It's the first thing they do when they come into the classroom. They do it before they even go sit at their desk. I check all of the folders first thing in the morning. I'm looking for homework completed, reading logs, notes, money, permission slips, all that good stuff. So I want to check this folder right first thing in the morning and the kids are usually working on their morning work and listening or watching the morning announcements. So my goal every day is to get through the folders by 8.15. It really just takes a few minutes to flip through each folder, grab the homework, make sure you have all the important papers out of it, and then we can continue on our day. So the kids are busy while I'm doing this, and like I said, it just takes a few minutes at the beginning of each day. Step three is to stuff homework, permission slips, and other very important papers into the return to school side of the folder. Now, you'll want to do this at the same time every day, and I would recommend doing it early in the day before it gets crazy. You definitely don't want to be stuffing folders during dismissal time. So pick five minutes of your day, whether it be right at the beginning of the day, your conference period, your lunch break, whenever, and stuff the folders each day. I like to do it personally myself so that I know that every child got the homework or the permission slip or whatever it may be, and I put it in their folder personally. At the end of the school day, when it's time to get ready to go home, students go and check their mailbox. Now their mailbox has all of their graded papers, their book fair paperwork, flyers from the school, handouts, all that good stuff is in their mailbox. So they'll go and get their mail from their mailbox and they'll slide it into the keep at home side of their take home folder. 
Now, if you're like me, you want these papers to go home and stay home. Do not come back papers. Even if you're a digital school and you're using um, almost all paperless resources, there's still going to be a lot of papers going home. It's shocking how many papers go home. So you want kids to get their mail and they'll slide their mail into the keep at home side of their folder. Up next is the behavior log for each child. This is something that goes home every week as well. Depending on what classroom management system you use, it may look a little bit different, but this open-ended form I use could work for almost all primary classrooms. Call me old school, but I still think a reading log is very important in the primary grades. It's about building good habits. It's about responsibility and accountability, and I want my kids reading every single night. So for me, a reading log is still very important. Now, I know a lot of my teacher friends in the upper grades aren't using traditional reading logs anymore because they use either a reading response journal or something like that. Um, but for me in the primary grades, I think a reading log is still very important. Now, keep it simple. All you really need the kids recording is the date they read the book, the title of the book, and maybe a spot for the parents' initials. So keep it simple. It's something that the child could even fill in themselves. Or you can have the parent fill it in if you'd rather do that. But a reading log is something I'd like to see completed every single night. If you're still watching, I hope you're not totally overwhelmed because I just gave you a lot of information. But I think if you use these simple tips, take home folders will be a breeze. And if you get it set up now during the summer, it will make back to school so much easier. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time.